Hope you guys, how's it going? So, uh, today's obviously, it's right behind me, but uh, today is the new reveal of the uh, new truck that we just got. Uh, since the Lincoln is now paid off, uh, has been for a little over a month now. That's a good feeling, uh, knowing that, and sorry, this thing is disgusting, and it's disgusting in here. I just got done doing a lot of work on the truck, but uh, soon this will then have a car cover on it once I order it. Uh, it's just really expensive, so um, I think Covercraft wants like 550 for it, but uh, just given the length of the vehicle, so, uh, but it's an indoor car cover. I think that's also part of the reason why it's uh, so expensive, but uh, yeah, she's paid off, and uh, yeah, here's the, uh, here's the new truck. So, let's uh, go ahead and start it up, and then uh, I'll show it off to you guys. Got our little flip key. So let's get some good shots of this thing and cue the music.
So I thought now I'd uh, give you guys a little bit of an explanation as to why we bought this specific generation and this specific year of truck. Uh, so this is a 2016, um, pretty close to right after uh, they redesigned the F-150. Um, they redesigned the F-150 back in 2015. So normally I'm a little bit cautious, uh, really cautious uh, about buying a freshly, you know, um, redesigned vehicle such as this. Uh, but so far, um, and again, I've only had the truck for two weeks, um, or a little over two weeks now. Uh, but anyway, uh, normally that kind of throws alarm bells off. Um, I don't want to say I was pushed into a corner, but the way I see it was uh, initially I was looking at 2013 and 2014 F-150s. Uh, they were still selling very high, uh, up in the high 20s, low 30s, um, with a pretty good amount of miles on them. Uh, now that does speak to the resale value of the F-150 of that year. Um, me personally, I was after those ones initially because it was the last two generations of the last, it was the last two years of the last gen F-150. So by that point, they had all the all the issues squared away with them. Uh, given where I live uh, in the area of 200 miles, there wasn't a whole lot of options for low miles. Uh, and I wanted, I wanted the five liter V8. I didn't want the EcoBoost. Uh, I, I respect the EcoBoost. I love the EcoBoost. But I just don't want to own one. Uh, it's, I like, I like simple. Uh, the only real complicated thing on this engine is the variable valve timing with the, with the, uh, with the solenoids for the intake and exhaust phasers, uh, and that's it, uh, as far as real complexity goes. But uh, that's, that's, and I've, I've driven, um, a friend of mine's F-150, it's, he had a, he has a 2013, and I drove that from Southern California out to, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, and back with the same engine, and I loved it. It got great power, it got great, uh, fuel economy for what it was, and it had amazing power, good towing ability, everything else, so I had first-hand experience with that engine, um, on an almost 3,000-mile road trip, and I loved it. So I knew I wanted that engine, but again, the options were kind of limited. So that's when I started doing my research. I know I didn't want a 15 because, again, now you're really taking a risk of a freshly redesigned truck. And the 2016 was the last year that they offered uh, the six-speed uh, six automatic transmission um, because in 2017, that's when they switched to that GM and Ford partnership 10-speed uh, automatic which is having a little bit of issues uh, as far as now. Um, it seems like they might be working the issues out, but again, it's the first year of a brand new transmission that's really kind of unproven, whereas this transmission has been in service for years. Um, and on the early iterations of that transmission, they got the issues sorted out. And also, uh, in 2018, that's when they brought out the, th uh, the third gen Coyote V8, which is having um, a lot of oil consumption issues. So again, kind of pushing me into a corner a little bit of the years that I would buy, and I came across this one. So I started searching. Well, I started searching 2016s because I figured it was right in the middle between the redesign and them switching to a different transmission, and then the following year a different engine. So then, uh, after a couple days, I came across this one, and uh, it was quite a drive to go look at it. Uh, I looked at it, I liked it, I test drove it, and uh, yeah. So far, the truck, uh, the only weird thing it did so far was, I feel like this truck was from Canada, but I have the regular miles per hour speedometer, so I don't know, because uh, <clears throat> there was one day it just... We got the truck, turned it on, and it converted everything to the metric system in kilometers. Uh, that's the only weird thing that it's done. But uh, since we've owned this, um, it's gotten a bath, uh, a couple baths. Uh, it is a little bit dirty right now, as you guys kind of saw in the uh, outside shots. But uh, other than that, it's just been the basic uh, routine maintenance items that I've hit on. So it got eight new spark plugs, a new PCV valve, new cabin air filter, new engine air filter, throttle body was clean and recalibrated, uh, 
new transmission filter. I flushed the transmission three different times. Uh, put 18 total quarts through the system. Uh, the transmission itself holds 13 quarts. Uh, what else did it get? It got a transfer case service. And I'm trying to think if that was it. But I think that's it. So that's all the maintenance that it's got done on it so far. Um, it's only been like maybe 30 miles since I did all that. So the truck's still kind of figuring itself out. Because uh, when you reset the throttle body, like dump the entire memory of the truck, it's got to figure itself out again for shift points and everything. Uh, mileage has been pretty good. We're sitting here idling, so it's going down. But um, on the highway driving at home, we were just touching 24 miles a gallon when we pulled back into uh, into our house because it was all highway driving but that's since we've owned it so come on done 619 miles so far and it's averaged 17 miles to the gallon which is pretty good um, my wife is the primary driver on this uh, since I'm still driving my little ranger <coughs> but uh, and it's it's only going maybe three or four miles a day just working uh, like the work schedule so uh, that's how many miles it has on it it's got 43,697 miles uh, the engine is still great in this uh, we haven't had any problems uh, in fact it kind of pepped up a little bit when I cleaned the throttle body and put new spark plugs in it uh, it's the throttle response is much better and uh, you kind of have to let off the gas now but uh, other than that, the truck's been good so far. Uh, if anything major happens to it, uh, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But, yeah, uh, the truck's doing great so far. Can't really complain. Um, there's a couple aesthetic things that I don't know if it's the way it was designed or if it was the previous owner of this truck. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, little things like this little gap right here for the glove compartment. So... I tried messing around with this after I replaced the cabin air filter, this little shelf. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't know if this is just bowed out, or again if it was just if if that's just the way it's designed with that massive gap. So uh, the infamous little hump that people talk about, uh, it's something my wife didn't even notice until I pointed something out to her, and it's. It's pretty freaking hard to see it in person. Like, you have to look for it. And <clears throat> I don't think it's anything of the dash actually warping. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. I don't think it's anything of the dash actually warping or anything. I think it's just the way that it's constructed with the HVAC system right underneath that. So, I don't really see what the huge deal's about. I mean, the dash has a bunch of curves on it already, so I don't really see the issue with it. And again... Like you have to, you have to look, in my opinion, to actually find it. So, uh, was it an expensive truck when it was new? I'm sure it was, um, but at the same time, like I don't see the point in nitpicking something over that. I mean, this is an F-150. I'm not buying a Bentley or an Aston Martin or something. So, a little thing here and there, I'm not really gonna complain too much about. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, though. Uh, the truck is uh, pretty damn good. I enjoy it. So there's a couple little uh, areas on the truck where there's, I don't want to say damage, but you can tell it's been used before. Um, there is an aftermarket Rhino liner in here, and it's kind of scraped through, and you can see the bare metal for the aluminum uh, on the bed on the tailgate. But again, I'm not really terribly worried about that. And then there's a small dent up on top of the, uh, the roof. But other than that, the truck is clean as you guys saw on the uh, outside shots so this does have the tra uh, pro trailer backup assist I have not set it up because I don't own a trailer yet uh, it does not have the trailer brake controller though and uh, the four-wheel drive system does work and I really like this truck because it does not have the locking rear diff because again that's one less thing that I have to worry about braking I like I like simple so uh, and it does have the standard 110 up there and it has another one in the back for the rear passengers as well back there and it it charges fast uh, I think it was a half hour maybe and I went from 4% up to 84% so <clears throat> granted that charge didn't last but it's neither here nor there so uh, 
that's really all I can honestly talk about the truck. So um, doesn't have navigation. We just have our little Garmin that we put in here. Uh, that was not a deal breaker for us. Would have been nice to have navigation built in. Yeah, sure, but you know we have our Garmin. So audio system's pretty good. Uh, I just updated the Sync 3 software in here, and we haven't had any issues with it. Um, but yeah. So also back here, uh, you have the 60-40 rear split. Uh, sorry, the seat's a little dusty. I haven't really had a chance to clean them up yet or not. But uh, you can push them all the way up and they'll lock in place. Um, this is the power inverter for the household outlets, the 400 watts. So you lose a little bit of storage space right here. But then you can also lift up the back as well for a completely flat uh, floor. And if you want, you can throw stuff in there. But this is just our sunshade. Keep the dash nice in the summertime, but it'll be nice, uh, especially taking the dog around and whatnot. She can just lay here flat on the floor that way she doesn't tear the seats up or anything. So, and then you just unlatch, and it's supposed to have a little shock to come down, but I know the big one does. But uh, here's your second household power outlet right there, and then you just have a standard cigarette lighter back there so, and then these are the weather tech floor mats for the back too uh, it still does have like standard carpet back here but again we just want to keep everything nice so because it is a truck and we know that's going to be used uh, a lot more than the Lincoln would be so but uh, yeah there's the door panel it's got the old school super duty tile uh, door handles on the inside and this little graphic right there <coughs> Same story up front. Got your little graphic here. Pretty decent sized glove box. And behind all of this is where your cabin air filter goes. But and then you got a little shelf right here for your owner's manual. And then once you have this closed, that's another little shelf you can put stuff. And then again, your standard 110 up there. Uh, it's got a massive center console. It's got a little place to store pens, and then a little tray with coin slots and everything. And uh, fun fact: um, this console is so big, and they have this ridge, and you have this ridge, not just for this, but uh, Ford also made it this way so that if you have, like, if you're running a business out of this truck, you can hang file folders in here. So that's why they made it uh, the way they made it. So in here. Another uh, little storage, you got two USBs and another little outlet back there. This does not have Apple CarPlay. I would have to update these to a smart USB, which I'm not worried that it does not have Apple CarPlay. That is not a deal breaker for me. But and then exclusive to the XLT uh, on a Sport is the console shifter. Normally you have to go up to the Lariat and higher to get this, but um, again, was this a deal breaker? I would have been fine with a column shifter, but uh, it is nice having a column shifter on a lower level truck like this. So I do appreciate the fact that they put that in there. So uh, it's got the little paddles on there, and then it's, uh, on, this is all on the other side. But I don't really see the point in using manual mode unless I'm towing. Uh, and then it's also got the track, or not track, Jesus, the uh, tow haul, and then the sport mode. Uh, on the side as well there that you can engage on there and have the truck act differently but uh, let's go ahead and check out the engine so under the hood you have the standard 5 liter V8 uh, this is the Gen 2 Coyote sorry for the wind I know it's bad um, I try to cut you guys off I'm, I'm sorry but uh, yeah Gen 2 Coyote um, I love this engine it's butter smooth it gets really good fuel economy for the size engine it is and it's got more than enough power that we're going to need especially for just butt putting around and then once in a blue moon towing and uh, that's the other reason why I bought this uh, engine was reliability because it's less moving parts the only real moving parts in here engine is your VCT solenoids.
and that's it. So it's a very simple engine to work on, but as far as I can tell, I haven't had to replace anything major yet. But the only gripe I will give Ford is the location of that oil filter. I wish they would have put it somewhere else, but that's just me. So, uh, but other than that, uh, it's a very clean uh, engine bay, minus all of the surface rust that's in here, because you could tell the previous owner lived in their salt area. And they did not wash the truck very well. Uh, obviously, the body is pristine, like there's, it's aluminum, it's not going to rust. Uh, the frame, there's a couple areas like on welds and whatnot that just have surface rust, but there's nothing major going on underneath. So that was one of the first places that I looked under here. But as you can tell, the e-coating they put on here from the factory is still holding up very well. I think the only real rusty part on here is the drive shaft, which if I have to replace a drive shaft, okay. <laughs> I'll take a drive shaft or a frame or something or an axle. But everything else underneath here is fairly clean, so and leak free. So even after I did all my maintenance on here it's not leaking or anything. So but and if we go back to the tailgate does not have the easy open tailgate like the assist again I really don't care um, but it's also got the cargo bed lighting uh, that's right outside so you're not going to see it but uh, it does have a nice little tailgate step in here with your little handle so it's especially in my driveway where it angles down this is a lifesaver to get in the back of the truck so I uh, appreciate it immensely. And the whole thing, I did have to lube this up a lot, but, and this is that little scratch I was talking about. Again, nothing major, but. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the truck, guys, so we'll hop back on the inside. Other than that, the truck is clean, and uh, like I said, uh, as maintenance things come along with this, uh, I'll be sure to put them out. Uh, I didn't want to cover anything that I previously talked about doing, like the spark plugs and all that stuff, just because it's my first time doing it, and I don't want to make myself look like an ass uh, trying to work on something that I've never actually worked on before. So, uh, But I did get all data for this, so that made it really easy. But uh, And again, if anything happens to this thing, uh, mechanically or anything like that, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But uh, yeah, that's the new truck. So uh, take it easy, and uh, see you next time. Oh, also, um, I should be getting my oil results back today for the Lincoln on the oil change. So, uh, if those do come in today, then I'll be sure to go over that with you guys. So, uh, take it easy.